Hey family, thank you for coming over to the house. Make sure you subscribe to both channels, The Up Chanel's 48 World, as well as Make It Make Sense with the sense spelled C E N T Z. Okay? But we just had to dive a little bit uh, into this subject and make it do what it do. We have Cat Williams talking to Shannon Sharp. I think that's his name. But um, he, they were at Club with Shay Shay. Meaning, you know, more women, more men than women are being interviewed by Shannon. But that's okay. We like our men trying to get out there and tell a story here and there. But we're talking about Cat Williams drag for filth, Ricky Smith. And he had made some pretty good points that's why i'm gonna make this a reaction video where you know cat is well cat is explaining everything about the situation of why he wasn't meaning ricky smiley wasn't cast to play uh the pimp that was in friday after next or something like that i think it was the it's the second friday film but i was like and then cat said they work on they working on um what do you call that they were working on another um Part to that, meaning part three, and he's already, you know, writing his part, doing his thing, and he's just leaving Ricky Smiley out in the dust because uh, it's just crazy how people can come and tell a lie and then make it believable, and while others are saying, "Well, it's not believable," okay, it's not possible, it's not really the way it went, and Ricky's just lying, but. Let's listen to the audio and get right into it. You stole Friday after next, the one I was in. <laughs> I wish all, all of America fumbled a bit when that happened. And, and then he said some stuff that we haven't heard in 100 years in Hollywood. You ain't say nothing. This man told you he had Cat Williams' role. He was going to be Money Mike. And Cat Williams was going to be the Santa Claus. Now, let's three quick points. You mean in Hollywood? Hollywood, they cast a five foot five black Santa Claus that weigh 145 pounds. That's your story. Your story is the Ricky Smiley that couldn't even do curse words because he had a Christian fan base. He was going to play the pimp. Why you didn't ask him why has he played a woman in more movies than he's played a man? Well, I didn't know he shouldn't be able. You would. Shots fired there. <laughs> he is saying um, Ricky Smiley. As well as Tyler Perry. They love dressing up as women, but they know nothing about their manhood. All right, go ahead, uh, Kat. Go ahead, brother. Let an athlete that's been on steroids talk about one of the greats. <laughs> Ricky Smiley can't act because Ricky Smiley can't act. He told you the story about when the movie came out. Where did he say he watched it? At home. He wasn't even at the premiere. You telling this man? Cat, he went at the premiere. Man, now you can tell that's a loser right there. And he is sulking. He's pouting. And that's why he did not want to come to, uh, where well, you got it? He didn't want to come to the premiere. But then again, was he even invited? Because he was cutting up on the scene from what Cat was telling me. All right? Or telling the audience that was listening to his dialogue. Well, let's go on back to the audio. You stole that. Oh, so he can get his name in the same sentence with a great one. It is sad. He was just that bitter when we were shooting it. He told everybody, it should have been my role. Everybody on the scene. Why do you think no cast member has ever said anything? He could have played that role like you. I thought he, he was. Sir, crazy. no one. Why no? He was with KD? He beat up Terry Crews? Why nobody know this story? You talking about in Hollywood, they switched off roles. You take this and he... What? Coconut oil is a hormone balancer. A 2012 study out of the Philippines... Ricky Smiley knows this. I don't know why liars lie, but I can tell you this. We auditioned in Los Angeles. Yes. I was audition number 201. 200 black comedians auditioned for the role of Money Mike with me. You're saying all 201 of us was auditioning and you had already had the role and had already shot the role in four days? The truth of the matter is, the Money Mike in the original script got raped in the bathroom. And that's what Ricky Smiley was okay with. Cat Williams. 
Wow. Ricky Smiley wanted to sing to be a man ripping another man, and it's cool? No, that's not cool. That's not cool at all. Had to take the risk in front of the studios and the cast and our powers that be in his very first movie and say respectfully, humbly, guys, if we talk about anything else, I have no credibility and I have no pull. But we're talking about comedy, right, where I have all the credibility and all the pull. The problem with Friday After Next is we're trying to make a classic comedy. And this comedy involves a rape. And rape is never funny, no matter who it happens to or what the circumstances are. If you would allow me to allow us to do this movie without a black man getting raped in it, I promise you that it will be twice as funny as it would be with him getting raped. So considering that's the real story, why would you bring up that story? 35 members of the cast and crew have never brought up that Ricky Smiley was going to play Money Mike. No one ever saw me put on a Santa Claus suit. We got a wardrobe department. They made a Santa Claus suit for me. Why that wasn't in the bloopers? Why? And, and here's the other thing. Everything that Money Mike said, Cat Williams wrote. So what Ricky Smiley say on his? You can't say my lines. I wrote them. That's how I already know that I'm going to be funnier than you. What he told everybody was, Cat Williams, hey, hey, don't nobody know who he is? I'm on the radio. I'm with Steven Said. Everybody know me. That's what he told everybody that would listen to on the set. That's the truth of the matter. He was so egregious. Not now. Then he was so egregious that, and Hollywood has never heard this in a hundred years. He was so egregious. I put in my contract that I won't work with Ricky Smiley again unless he's in a dress. Now, what was Ricky Smiley's next movie? Was it First Sunday? Did he wear a dress in it? You bet he did. It's in my contract. Why would you put that in your, put this in your contract, Cat? Eh? That's where he's the unbelievable actor. Him and Tyler Perry can't play a man to save their life. They play good women, and I believe that the best actor should be in the best role. So that's why, because when we released that clip and he said that, you responded because he said he was supposed to play Money Mike and you were supposed to say, play Santa Claus. An outright lie. So, that he knows is a lie. So why would he say it? Because he's a liar. Nobody knows why liars lie. And that's why I had to come on the program. I know so many things I shouldn't know and they all know it. They all know it. Why? Because you don't make me the villain. Not the guy that raises black children and ain't never done a hard drug in his life and don't have no stories of doing nobody dirty. And, and they'll just go out and they'll lie. The, the industry doesn't mess with Cat because he didn't show up for the studio. No studios have ever said that. Look at my IMDb. It will show you that no studio has ever lost money with me on the script. How? That's why I'm saying, that's why I can't let Ricky Smiley say he was supposed to play Money Mike. Because I wrote the words for Money Mike. I designed the hair for Money Mike. I collaborated with the wardrobe department and made outfits to make sure that no one in America would be wearing what Money Mike was wearing. I told him to go get the Prowler. I then told him to paint it purple. I told him don't have an actor at playing a pimp. We could get an actual pimp Archbishop Magic Don Juan to play. Like, I... I did far too much work for somebody to come years later and try to tag along just for their own self-aggrandizement. Why didn't Q set the record straight? Terry Crews could have set the record straight. Mike Elf could have set the record straight. Why none of them set the record straight? That's what you were supposed to ask him when he told you those lies that but no I didn't one's know ever heard. Lie. Right, but he's telling you something no one's ever heard of. Nobody has ever heard. Oh, Matt Aff Ben Affleck and Matt Damon was in a movie, and somebody said, y'all should switch roles. And, like, this is a business. But that's the thing, Kat. <laughs> Normally when people give you information, I'm thinking I'm hearing it for the first time and they're giving information no one else knows or has ever heard. So I'm taking them at face value. These are like, this is like Steve Harvey telling people he used to be homeless. That's my story. That's not his story. Steve Harvey wasn't never homeless. When he, Mark 
Curry was touring with him 25 years ago, he was making $3,000 a show in cash and doing five shows a week. This, they just tell the stories. This, my, thanks to my wife, I'm where I am. You said that about the first wife. You forget that? You told us it was her. Then you went and married somebody else that think like a man. Like, what are you talking about? They just, they think they can rewrite history. The, uh, uh, Guy Tory did a beautiful special about the comedy store and Fat Tuesday where he said that Steve and Cedric and Kevin Hart and Tiffany Haddish came through there and made all lies. Steve and Cedric never performed at the comedy store at all. Tiffany was only seen at the Laugh Factory in 15 years in Hollywood. No and I don't see why we keep putting um, Tiffany Haddish up because she's not funny. I mean, Queen Latifah is funny. I could say that. But we're talking about the movie they were all in together. Oh, but no, no, no. We don't need that. No one in Hollywood has a memory of going to a sold-out Kevin Hart show. There being a line for him ever getting a standing ovation at any comedy club. He already had his deals when he got here. Have we heard of a comedian that came to L.A. and in his first year in L.A. he had his own sitcom on network television and had his own movie called Soul Plane that he was leading? No, we've never heard of that before that person or since that person. What do you think a plant is? Maybe people don't understand the definition. Oh, so we got an op. We got an op on the floor. Ricky Smiley is an op. Steve Harvey is an op, and I can go on and on. I don't understand that, but to tell you the truth, Bernie Mac was the, he could have been all the kings of coming in by himself. He played such a wonderful position when he was here on this earth, making people laugh, but especially with them baby kids. <laughs> but at least Cat Williams gave uh, Bernie Mac his flowers, even though you know, it's a long time coming, but he acknowledged Bernie Mac, and he said Bernie Mac was real solid with his material, and he, you know, he loved it. Let's go back. Missions of these words. If you're 55 or over, did you know you could? This rock where he shows you that his whole upbringing in comedy was on the East Coast. Yeah, so how simultaneously was he here in Los Angeles doing the same thing? It didn't happen. It didn't happen. And I, I, I hate to seem like a petty individual for picking apart lies, but Jesse Smollett going to keep lying until you say we don't believe you. Like, it's important in the checks and balances of the universe that liars not get to make complete narratives for themselves. Are you not afraid about being blackballed again? These are some power people. What do you mean again? These people are not powerful. Satan can't create anything. That includes blessings for his people. That's why, do you know what the number one job of somebody that sold their soul in Hollywood is? What? Is to act like it didn't happen. They all do the same job. Why do you think Gary Owen can't cross over and he already white and been in comedy for 25 years? If what I say ain't the case. It's a cabal. It's a it's a consortium. They, they rock with who they rock with and they don't with who they don't. But I'm not scared of being the competition any more than you were when you lined up uh, uh, across from a superior team. Yeah, on paper, they're a better team. Right. They have all the assets and resources and we don't. But let us get on the line, boy, boy, and see if that factors in. I, I guarantee you it won't. Wow. Because Shannon Sharp got to be a different person than that other person. Absolutely. And he always was. That doesn't change when I change teams. That remains the same. That's how a legacy is built. So, All of these shortcut takers. I, I was. They canceled me for talking about Harvey Weinstein before the thing came out. But he offered to suck my penis in front of all my people at my agency. <laughs> Wait a minute. You saying Weinstein wanted to suck your penis? Wow. That's something we didn't definitely hear on our mainstream uh, news outlet. And it really wasn't on Facebook. It wasn't on any other social media programs. But thank you, Kat. Thank you for telling us how evil uh, and vindictive the industry is when you're talking about 
you know, a group, a set group of people. People belonging to a certain organization, and they all are my. We call it all um, have the mindset of basically um, making a person be good in Hollywood, or making them feel bad, and they put them out the door, and they will never have a career again, and, and especially in uh, comedy anyway. But let's go back. What am I supposed to do? He did all of that. I'm thinking I'm the only black person on the script. I get there. It's three other black guys on there. Woo. Huh. So you wonder what they did. <laughs> I told him no. What y'all do? <laughs> <laughs> and this is why when I walk in a room, heads go down. Behind my back, I'm nothing. I'm just a regular old comedian that's bitter and jealous. But in my face, no, no, no. The king has walked in and they have to respect it only because I've not taken the shortcuts. I've not been funded. They pay you to not talk about things they don't want you to talk about. They tell you that themselves. I can't do that because I. Steve told you that he stopped doing stand up because he has seven TV shows. The only problem is when he stopped stand up, he didn't have those seven TV shows. He stopped stand up because he got in a comedy battle called the Championship of Stand Up Comedy with one Cat Williams in Detroit in front of 10,000 people and lost because Cat Williams said he was actually bald and that was a wig. And I went in and that's why he couldn't do stand up anymore. Imagine him coming to tell you another story where he got so big and it was Bernie and them's fault because they wanted to be movie stars. Give me a web exclusive. Yep, that sounds like jealousy to me. Bernie Mac got his own sitcom show after being on The Kings of Coming. He did more films with, um, what is his name? Uh, Clooney. And, uh, Shoot, I can't think of their names to save my life. But y'all know, put it in the comments so I can refresh my brain. Because uh, I literally, I, I'm in a mind fog. I really am. But I was so glad that he said something about Bernie Mac. How Bernie Mac was likable. He was relatable. But let's continue on. No, no, no. The king has walked in and they have to respect it only because I've not taken the shortcuts. I've not been funded. They pay you to not talk about things they don't want you to talk about. They tell you that themselves. I can't do that because I. Steve told you that he stopped doing stand up because he has seven TV shows. The only problem is when he stopped stand up, he didn't have those seven TV shows. He stopped stand up because he got in a comedy battle called the Championship of Stand Up Comedy with one Cat Williams in Detroit in front of 10,000 people and lost because Cat Williams said he was actually bald and that was a wig. And I went in and that's why he couldn't do stand up anymore. Imagine him coming to tell you another story where he got so big and it was Bernie and them's fault because they wanted to be movie stars. What? You called Ocean Eleven to get that nigga's part. What do you mean you didn't want to be a movie star? So on the behalf of Bernie, I, I, I would have to say what I have to say. Have, you, have, ever been on, truth have you ever been on tour with any of these guys? The guy, I, every guy I mentioned to you is not funny out there in real life. So <laughs> no. Faison's never done his own tour in 30 years. Steve Harvey don't do stand-up no more. Cedric doesn't write. I'm sorry, he doesn't write. Ricky Smiley has been playing the same old black woman forever. Like, you can't get a young fan base with that. Like, you gotta be doing karaoke around the country to make that work. Right. And he is. But I'm a stand-up comedian. This is my 19th 100-city tour. I'm not going to have a conversation with these lazy bums that'll take a shortcut at any point. Yes, it's easier for you to juice than to get in the gym. But you don't get to bring that body in here talking crazy. Talk about how good you look. What? No, no, there's too many comics out there that are putting their life on the line to tell these jokes, man. Okay, let's get to your upbringing. We're going to circle back and we get some... Uh -huh. I want to protect him real quick. Did you have said for the Kings of Comedy? It was in 2018, 2019, but did you mean 1999? 
because it came out in 2000. So I just want to make no, sure. No, I didn't. No, no, no. So what I meant to say was, remember, he said... I couldn't do stand-up anymore. I had seven TV shows. I said he didn't have any of those TV shows at the time. I know, you're talking about, about Cedric. Joke stealing from Cedric. Yeah, oh, Cedric. Okay, so, so, okay. 2018, 2019, but it came out in 2000, so I just want to make sure. Okay, no, 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 no. No. What comes out in 2000? The, the original Kings of Comedy. Right. My, I'm on BET's Comic View, and they're using this as the commercial in 1998. Okay. That's why I'm saying, yeah. So, so if I, yeah. yeah. So if I yeah. said the date's okay. wrong, yeah. yeah. So yes. okay. well, let's go ahead and clear that up. Okay. You said, yeah. I had Cedric on here, and I asked him about the joke stealing, and yeah. he said the timeline doesn't add up. Correct. To your to to that point, you say. Right. So he thought that I was just a no name comedian and that he could take this joke and nobody would know. Right. The issue was that I had already done this particular joke on BET's Comic View twice. Right. It had done so well on BET's Comic View that they had made it part of the commercial. So part of the commercial of make sure you tune in to BET was you seeing me doing this joke. Right. And this joke is one of those jokes in comedy where you set it up and it takes a little longer to set it up. It takes about three, three. minutes but then you're just hitting them with jokes after right. that because you don't have to set it up right uh mark curry had already helped me work on this joke because i thought it was good because i was getting a standing ovation on it he had me go back in the lab to help me craft it to be an even more powerful joke so this is not just a random joke this is my very best joke and it's my last joke and it's my closing joke okay 1998 <clears throat> I'm doing this joke. It's on Comic View. Cedric comes to the comedy store. He watches me in the audience. He comes backstage. He tells me what a great job I did and how much he loves the joke. Two years later, he's doing that as his last joke on the Kings of Comedy. And he's doing it verbatim. He's just changed my car into a spaceship. And me doing this joke right. and this joke is one of those jokes in comedy where you set it up and it takes a little longer to set it up it takes about three minutes but then you're just hitting them with jokes after right. that because you don't have to set it up right uh mark curry had already helped me work on this joke because i thought it was good because i was getting a standing ovation on it he had me go back in the lab to help me craft it to be an even more powerful joke so this is not just a random joke this is my very best joke and it's my last joke joke and it's my closing joke okay 1998 i'm doing this joke it's on comic view cedric comes to the comedy store he watches me in the audience he comes backstage he tells me what a great job i did and how much he loves the joke two years later he's doing that as his last joke on the kings of comedy and he's doing it verbatim. He's just changed my car into a spaceship. Him and Steve had already apologized for me, so I gave him a pass for a decade. Why would you sit here and be like, I talked to, I saw Cat 30 times, <laughs> and Cat didn't do, as I stand before you, Shannon. I would have bust Cedric's stomach. <laughs> there was nothing that would have kept me from one of these in, in that patch right there. Like, are you kidding me? Why would you downplay me like that? Why did I give you a pass if you were just going to lie? And so that's what I'm saying. Like, they're all a group. Cedric, Steve, Ricky, they've been a group. Everybody knows that. They've been aligned. And, and there are these alliances in comedy. And if you stand against them, then they sometimes have a problem. But we don't let that change the content because that's all you know me for is that I'm quite likely to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help me God. Everything Cedric and Ricky Smiley ever been in got canceled for not being funny. Ricky sat here and told you that they cut him out of every movie he did. They always had a reason. Like, <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> That's why I'm funny, because I'm a happy person. I laugh all day long. I can't even imagine.
the misery of these bumps. <laughs> just to not be good at what you do not work hard at what you do but have to act like you're the best at what you do it is crazy it's crazy but they be touring they, they, they be doing like a hundred shows a year that's me <laughs> I don't run into none of them that's what I'm saying if you a phase I love fan you mean you've been a fan of him for 32 years you still waiting on him to do his first special you mean to tell me if Steve Harvey, your favorite comedian, you mean you've been waiting for him to do stand-up for 15 years now? I mean, Steve got a, got a, a lot of other DL, DL's still out there. None of those irons matter to stand-up. Who cares that they wrote a plaque card for you to do Family Feud on? Like, you're... So you're successful because we're surprised you can talk for a living and it's entertaining that you're gonna say some funny country things. But not a writer. Right. Not a writer. Candy did have a good part in the movie, man. The Santa, Santa Claus was funny, man. The dude said the entire time we were filming, I can't play this role. They got a bandana over my nose and my mouth. My family not even going to know who this is. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, tell your story. <laughs> <laughs> like, Comic View did a couple of disservices to comedy as well. Mm -hmm. So there were people like me that were out there getting two and three standing ovations in one set and that wasn't good for television so what they did was they started making everybody get a standing ovation so they would tell the audience when they get off stage everybody get up and cheer and so now the fact that I'm the only one out there going to get standing ovations is now making people think everybody get a standing ovation mm. and that's not how comedy is so right. I, I understood why that couldn't go anymore because remember Ricky Smiley sat right here and told you a story about how he performed with uh, Mike Epps and Cat Williams when he did Comic View and to let him tell it <clears throat> he was funnier than both <laughs> my name lived down <laughs> hey, talking about the special needs that's, ooh that's good that's a different that's time that, level material. that was a different time Cat. no it wasn't it yeah. was the time I was there but I'm saying that time this time same times no but I'm saying just like people that tell you the Egyptians they not black Egypt is in Africa folks as long as Egypt is in Africa, then Egyptians are African. Do you believe you could tell the same jokes today as when you started out? I mean, Eddie Murphy not telling those jokes. Richard Pryor not being able, wouldn't be able to tell those jokes in 2024 that they told in the 70s and the 80s. So they wouldn't have told them. But that's my point. They're not inferior people. No. If they were in this time, they would be going according to our time. Just like then, we were going according to that. Like, that's how it is in the world. There are words that we can use for a while. And we use them for a while until somebody says, that ain't a good word. We should stop saying that. Correct. That don't make people feel good. And we stop saying the word. And we move on to another word. You can't say the R word. You can certainly say special needs. Yeah. You can certainly say spectrum. Slow. You can, you can, you, there are things that you can say to get your point that don't have to hurt people. Right. But you would know that if what you did was construct the English language for a living. Mm -hmm. Then you would understand that part. Tando is offering great discounts up to... Rick's about the morning show. Hey, uh, listen, uh, first of all, good morning and uh thank y'all for this. Uh thank y'all for this opportunity, Rick is the morning show. Uh let's uh, let's uh just get into this. Uh the whole uh internet going crazy, uh comments that Cat Williams made. Uh whatever I can't speak on behalf of the other comedians, but the only thing I can speak for is myself. Uh Cat made some comments on Shannon Sharp's show about uh, when I was on uh, Shannon Sharp was telling him the story of some of the behind the scenes from Friday after next. Let's start. Let's start with that. Uh, when I when I went out there, uh, let's just go back in 2000. I was the host of BET Comic View and in the season 2004. Uh, I also worked on this show called Live from L.A. That was my first job with BET. And uh, that's where I met Ice Cube, uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken. And Ice Cube was like, man, hey, man, I like your work. 
uh, I want to do some stuff with you. I want to put you in some movies. And Ice Cube started putting me in movies, which really uh, helped my career. Uh, I was in All About the Benjamins. But, of course, uh, when they changed the ending of it, it, that part didn't make any sense. But uh, then he put me in Friday After Next. <clears throat> and uh, just for clarification, I went out to audition for Friday After Next as Money Mike, not the Santa Claus. And that, that, is, that is the honest God truth. Uh, I had no reason to go on there and uh, uh, to go on Shannon Sharp show and lie about any of that. Uh, that that's what I auditioned for uh, was Money Mike, and I guess the producers, uh, Cube, and everybody saw something different. And uh, I, I think that Money Mike character, uh, Special K, was going to come off as kind of like uh, just a uh, 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 wonder uh, a guy who was hanging around in the uh, strip mall who was just kind of being annoyed. Yeah. And, Almost like a crackhead type of character that was right. Just, so Cat, I, I guess when Cat Williams uh, uh, did it, they added the whole pimp twist uh, to that character, which was actually a better decision and made it funnier. Cause ain't no way in the hell I could have uh, executed that role like that. And I'm glad that they made that decision and they put me in a Santa Claus role, uh, which was actually perfect. So when I got back to L.A. They say, hey, your role has changed. You're going to be the Santa Claus. And here's the Santa Claus suit. Put, put it on, and here's your lines. Sat in the trailer, went over the lines, went over my stuff with Cube, and the rest is history. Uh, had no reason. Uh, I just want to want to clarify that. Had no reason to lie uh, uh, about that. As a matter of fact, uh, my manager at the time, Gary Abdo, who is still one of my best friends, who also helped start my career, and he's the owner of uh, the Atlanta Comedy Theater in Atlanta. Uh, we got him on the phone, just just to clarify. Uh, Gary Abdo, good morning. Oh, I'm good, man. Uh, j just for clarification, you know, uh, you was my manager at the time. We went to L.A. together uh, for the audition. Uh, Cube wanted to see us. What is your version? Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I included uh, Ricky Smiley's take on it or how he feel it was done. And I'm like, why, Ricky, why are you going to get all these people to back your story up? If it's that if it's that way, it's that way. He had like a itch. But go on. Oh, we're old. And that was 23 years ago. So, you know, our memories are what our memories are. You, you went out, you auditioned. They wanted you to play Money Mike. Okay. It's you. Some behind the scenes thing. I had to plug my phone up. Charger wasn't having it. Today. Money Mike, that was the sides that they had sent. The sides are the. And that's why hey, your role has changed. You're going to you know, be the Santa uh, Claus. Go and here's the Santa Claus. Claus suit. Uh, he put, has put it on. And, and here's your family lines. members. Sat in the trail and went over the lines. Also, and went over my stuff with you uh, and the rest of the history. And people that uh, do have no reason. Uh, I just want to want to clarify that. So, uh, we want to lie. Can't we the best? About that. Or whatever. It ain't nothing but love over here. Just because we don't agree. Gary Nasso, who is one of my best friends, who also helped start my career. And he's like, end up sitting next to him on a plane. Uh, the Atlanta and when I saw him, I could Atlanta, do nothing but uh, grab him phone, and hug just, him. Just and we text each uh, other all Gary day Abdo on Christmas Day. Come on, like we trying to make up for long time. Two talented people you? that actually love oh, each I'm other. Good, and, uh, and, uh, just for clarification, uh, uh, Special K. You know, Cat Williams uh, got some comedy dates coming up. At the time. He's going to be in Birmingham. Cat Williams is coming to Huntsville. I want y'all to go out and support us. I want y'all to pack those damn theaters and show. Yeah, Nothing well, but you know, unconditional old, love that was uh, to him and to any ago. company so, you know, that come to our space, are what our memories you know, are. Birmingham, Huntsville, that's like my area. You went out, I grew up, you auditioned, or whatever, uh, they can, wanted can you, you to play money, Mike. Uh, yeah, that you got was uh, the January 12th, Cedar Park, Texas, the, the 14th, Estero, Florida, the 19th, Huntsville, Alabama, the 26th of January, Tupelo, Mississippi. That was the audition you did. They said, great, you want to play this role. We was going to go out and support him. Man, my recollection is all love over here because you had to go back so, and read for <laughs> mm. 
you're going to clear the air the by telling all of your time. viewers as well as the and listeners the night that, before that they need to go support Cat. <laughs> we got different sides, and they said, no, but we no, want you Ricky, to play You are this not role. in the service we didn't order people it. around. People you know, have a choice nowadays. Really were under the if they don't want well, to listen have the to you, money they don't have to. But then all Get of a sudden they switched it up. Now station. we understand why. If Cat came in, blew them didn't away, like what he he's an incredible performer. As far as comedy, stand-up comedy, that was he would have left the scene as well. Probably one of the most iconic but breakout parts you trying to tell your viewers or your listeners I mean, that, was that they should go and purchase tickets and see Cat That was literally Cat's first movie. That is pretty you know, dumb. You know, Friday was okay? not Chris Tucker's dumb. first movie. Just let it, you could have just let everything went where it was going to lead or for you could have just spoke your piece, but you Cat went back Williams and got your manager from way back when and to come in and say, no, this was me, this was that. Oh, I just don't understand, I don't understand. Touring comedian, one of the I biggest to do it in this generation. Uh, so what we were addressing for everybody that's tuning in, trying to just tell me that now, uh, Ricky Smiley and his and, uh, I'm a, I'm a leave manager it back then, man, uh, because it's giving, uh, um, here's the thing what we all need to understand. Here's what we all need to understand. Woo, that's a, ooh, you know that's, where you've been. Oh, so not right. So not right. But you don't know where right. you're going. Let's go on back to the audience. And you don't know who you're going to need. As they say, it was history. And but I promise to yeah, God, yeah, if, 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 if there's anything that he you were auditioning for Money Mike, we were told you need, had the role, we'll and then be that there. switched up. You know, because I stick up a and comment. I'm glad I ended up doing this. We all get along all the time. We all have issues, but at the same time, we all all the same game. I don't agree with all the person all the time. I go to the country club and go through different stuff with the bros and go with them black fans. At the end of the day, uh, and you could squeeze uh, over that gate. So, yeah, that was the thing. Uh, uh, and then uh, there was uh, no uh, contract uh, ever uh, that uh, 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 I'm in agreement so, uh, with the first uh, uh, Sunday uh, movie. I, I because can, that can, was a whole different production uh, directed uh, by uh, who just directed my Netflix special, David Talbert. Yeah, that's because you told a lie. You know, the truth is in me. Playing Bernie's chickens. Uh, here that's in Point Blank. It's not going to be any stuttering. It's not going to be David any pauses. You're just going to say, this of my Captain, work for a long time. And I'm it was like, we it. want you to play if Cat wanna come Bernie's on the show chickens and, and throw, you know, and, you know, and, and here you go. And, and that's what Just happened. And I went up. out yeah, there and so shot weird. that. And one day, but me and Red Grant, and that was Ricky. a lot of fun. Right. And, and it had nothing to you do only with had to explain uh, to us Cat Williams' contract or whatever. So, you know what I'm saying? He messed around and told Forrest Cedric. And he got a handle on Tiffany Haddish a little bit. And he know he drew up. You have to get on the air and explain something. Okay. Kevin uh, uh, like this, but, but let's continue uh, to uh, you know, listen to the audio. That's, 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 that's true. Right now, but I, I don't know I'm what trying else to miss, Trying not so, to misquote <laughs> anything. There it is. Uh, much, so so much thank y'all for this opportunity. I, I gave you three. Know, I know the kids going to kill me. Uh, but thank y'all so much for this opportunity to explain this. If I can say something real quick, Ricky, I've known you since 1992. I've known you since before the for Money Mike was born. We were told you had to vote. And I couldn't be prouder of all the work. And the crazy thing about it is, uh, we had a conversation so uh, when it came out. It, it, it's just it's a lot of this it's amazing 12 years ago. Back and, and we had a conversation because I was on 14th Street in Atlanta, right by the Four Seasons up. Hotel. Um, and I was driving down the street with my granddad in the car, and yeah, I saw Cat Williams uh, going across the street about on 14th it, we Street. Employing people. And I said, Cat, what's we up? Uh, supporting well, the whole girl to make sure we was good. He said, come over, have a cup of coffee. Uh, doing great things in the community. Uh, doing and I went great things with our uh, 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 wonderful went national and got the fraternity. Uh, chopping and, uh, it up or whatever. You know, the thing about it is it just came about a crazy time. Or whatever. I said, man, I want you to come out and say hello to my granddad. My granddad is a fan. He came out to the get through this one year get out to my and, uh, and I came out and spoke and to my granddad. And that's why we have to be real careful when we attack. And wish them well. My granddad you don't know what somebody like, going through. Like, like, I'm, I'm, I'm a granddad, granddad was there at the time. I'm having body I'm not trying to do in the truck. Say any and, uh, and we dapped it up. And that was, uh, that was like, it. My son died. I mean, that, that, that was it. I thought that and I can't deal with the winter. I didn't know that we had Having any issues in there, uh, any depression right there's now. anything that I'm and trying to figure out. Uh, I'm going to deal with Williams all of that. Anybody. And I'm not uh, saying I'm any of this simply, but I'm just saying, saying like mistakes, um, but I'm uh, dealing with I stuff did, and I just I, want I, to I, clarify. You know, that, that's just whatever, but God, truth uh, that I did audition for. Being raised in the church and being brought up the way I was made, I just had to handle things the right way. 
uh, all uh, the, might, the, might not the be the most popular with, uh, way. Like, Aaron, you can help me out with this because... I can crack jokes and I can go you in, know, too. comedy greats like... I have to choose a different uh, route because Flip I have Wilson a responsibility. Flip Wilson played Geraldine. Yeah, we Richard don't want to upset anybody in this family or any of his fans. Uh, Jamie we Fox don't want to have to make one of people choose. Martin Clay, Chip, 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 and me. I did. Bernie Jenkins, Tyler Perry did. But there's a lot of comics and a lot of comedy greats. That did I mean, we can perform everywhere every single weekend. For the sake weekend. of funny, so, for entertainment, for the sake of the land. God bless and that. It has God nothing to do family. with nobody's I hope that he is uh, safe. comfortable I hope in the role. Nobody healthy. wants to put on a I love damn dress or everybody. comfortable in it. And I you know. always have. Uh, uh, all y'all, that has nothing to do with my uh, man. Twenty before the top of the hour. More Rick's Mind the Morning Show. Coming up. Trying to play a role. Trying to put food on the table for my family. Uh, oh, uh, because so. I heard a little bit of what, nothing more than a prop. Um, nothing more than a, 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 a way issue. to get a laugh. I mean, back you know, in the day, you know, it was questionable when his son there died. There were no females playing and female roles. He was acting kind of strange, uh, but yet he came back man. to work. You know, and it's just part of, an, it's part of an art form. It's work. part of what makes it fun. You said, bring the money to it. I guess I'm in Los Angeles. Uh, I'm and sure you uh, remember see what was going on with his son. This, the pilot that you shot, well, as you know, he didn't make it. Comedy TV show, but that we, I, hell, I thought it was strange. Had a if whole your kid died, with Medea. I want to be with somebody that's yeah, going to yeah, kill my son. Yeah, yeah, I did a sketch with my son that I didn't know. Medea, me, Earthquake, Tyler Perry, rest. Uh, Nisi Nash. Uh, uh, we did a thing called The View. It was supposed to be like The View, but it was a church-based Version Take the of body in. The view, and, and uh, um, it was just kind of great to see Bernie Jenkins, the character, and Medea. And I started her, off doing Bernie Jenkins, just like, uh, doing prank phone calls on the, on the uh, book uh, on the and show in Birmingham, which spin into, have hey, I think him. you should That's do a character. Thing. This would be a great character for this role. So we were all in our 30s, late 20s, doing what we had to do. It's in order to be successful you know, now that we, we are older, I'm comfortable in my job in uh, radio. I'm comfortable you in uh, you know, the roles that I get that, and the things that I, I get to do. Life, and I just in a finished a, a phenomenal comedy but special. So, don't make so the statement about Ricky Smile is not funny. I've been sold out since 97. That was a Every single show I have done since 97, maybe not big arenas. But I, I pack um, up those theaters and, 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 and have the ad shows right and comedy clubs in between I'm radio and all of that but, uh, and raising the family has, uncomfortable uh, with what, what makes me sad. Type uh, I don't like you the way that made that. my kids feel. We just want and you to that's why I'm not going to, you, you to, know, uh, go, um, be okay, the best DJ you now. can be or radio personality. And that's it because you should stay at least two months, three months. Uh, but, away you know, from the air, and they would have they missed you, but they would have recognized uh, no, why you had it, it's true what you were doing. Out, period. They so would definitely if I were you, you, I would just way. say, Oh, and you would have well, a job. Oh, wow, you, I would have a to come back, but since you didn't want to have the conversation, or Cat didn't want to have that conversation, here we are. Listen, Cat Williams told him up. From uh, left the, to right, from top to bottom. Do <coughs> you hear what I'm saying? Of what was, but y'all make sure um, y'all subscribe to the channel. Such a um, um, <coughs> both of them at, at least, you know, it's free. You can do it. I'm, I'm sure I'll come across something you want the me to talk about. Between you, but check in every now and, and then. You thought on that your would work it out. Get down in those comments. Share the video. But and definitely your kids, um, subscribe I mean, really, to the come channel. On, come on, hit that notification bell. Your kids, you know when I drop videos. See you later. Bye bye.